In this video, we're gonna add danger to our feed Aspen Gabe for Pygame and Python. Up until now, we've just had the boring blue food bouncing around the screen and Aspen ate the food and scored. Now we wanna add a twist by introducing red food. And now Aspen needs to eat the red food without touching the blue food. If she eats the red food, she scores. And if she touches the blue food, she dies. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pygame series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got the code that we worked on in the last video. I've renamed it aspen underscore collide 6.py. It was aspen underscore collide 5 before. And now let's come down here and make a very quick change. Before we get into anything, I'm going to come down all the way to the bottom here where we're sort of setting things up. And remember when we start our game, we're passing in the aspen group and the food group, which is just, you know, our definition of aspen and then our definition of all this food. I'm going to change this from aspen group. I just want to pass in aspen which is just this Aspen instance of our game class. So the reason why I'm doing this is because we're gonna change the collision mechanism in a little bit because we wanna be able to differentiate between red and blue food and we need to change some things. So in order to do that, we need to change this. Uh, everything else is gonna stay the same with Aspen food. So, okay, we've got the food group here now and we probably need to make some changes to this. Now we're doing all of this stuff, which is sort of defining how many foods we want. Foods, right? So we've got eight foods. So we've got this loop. We're looping through it eight times. And we're saying, hey, every time there's a food, uh, set the coordinates, the X and the Y coordinates. And so it's going to be like across the top eight times. And then add that food to our food group. I think we want to get rid of this. And we want to do all of this work inside of our game class. And there's reasons for that we'll talk about in a minute. But for now, we've still got this food group, right? And remember, when we call our game, we're passing that food group in. So in our game class, we can add food to the food group, which is what we're going to do now. Remember, in the past, we had X and Y coordinates with our food. We're going to expand that. We're going to have X and Y coordinates. We're also going to tell it what food to be, you know, which image, either a red one or a blue one. And we're also going to give it a special number, zero or one. And zero will be our blue food and red will be one. I'm throwing a lot at you. Let's just get into it. So let's come up here to our game class and let's come down here and here we're defining the fonts here. Let's now also define our food images. We need a blue food and we need a red food. And so in the past we did this in our food class. So if we come down here to our food class, we just had one image, right? And we loaded this food to which is in our images directory. We're going to do this same thing, but we're not going to do it in our food class anymore. We're going to do it up here in our game class. And so I'm just going to paste this twice. Now, uh, this food to that's our blue image. I've also got the same food, but it's just red and that's food. It's just food.png. So these are our two foods. Let's add food to our food group. And remember, we're passing that food group in right here. So that's why we can add our food to it inside of here instead of outside in that loop like we did before. So let's start out with self dot food underscore group dot add. And then we want to add a food instance, right? And before we had coordinates. So it was like 200 by 200, right? Or it was we had that loop. So it was I times whatever. So for every time we looped, it would be one, two, three. So this was 100 times one times two times three that put it up across the top. Right now, it doesn't really matter. Let's just put these all in the same spot. So we're going to add that. Now we also need to add whether this is red or blue. So let's start out our first guy here with let's make him red. And then also we need a one or a zero. So let's say uh, food type one equals red or I should start out with zero equals blue and one equals red. So, okay. Now we need to account for these two things later on and we'll do that in just a second. For now, let's do this one more time and let's make this guy our blue food and we'll put him at a zero. Now we could just copy this, you know, a whole bunch of times. That's kind of silly. Instead, uh, let's just do a quick loop. Let's go for I in range of seven. 
Uh, let's just do that. So this will create seven blue and one red. It will dot add them to our food group. And we're passing in the coordinates of 200 by 200, the color of it, and then the type. So, okay, now we've got this. I'm going to change this to like 190 just in case because these are all going in one spot. But then later on, we're going to randomly shoot them out as we've already done whenever we drew them in the, in the class several videos ago. But I guess it's sort of possible that a red and a blue could be shot at the random same direction at the same time. And so they would overlap. I don't really want that because then you may not be able to see the red if the food is on, if the blue is on top. So we'll just change this slightly and that should be fine. Okay. So now we've got these four things that we're passing in to our food class, but the food class, if you remember, only accounts for two things because in the past, all we were passing was an X and a Y. So we also now need to pass those other two things. So that's our image. Is it a red or a blue? And then also the food underscore type, and that's a zero or a one. So now we need to account for these guys. So in the past, we had self.image, like I said, loading this image here. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to load whatever happens to be the image that we're passing in. So we'll, we'll put that as self.image equals image. Now this is going to be either the red or the blue pie game image. And that, of course, uh, we just did is this thing right here. So it's going to be pie game .image .load blue or pygame.image.load red, right? Blue or red. So, okay. Now we need to count for this one or zero. So let's come down here to our food. And this is food type, right? So let's just come down here and add this in. And we could do this anywhere. Let's say uh, food type. And remember, let's see, one, zero equals blue and one equals red. So let's go self dot, let's call this type. And that's going to equal our food type. So let's run this. I'm in my C slash games directory, virtual environments turned on. Let's run Python, Aspen underscore collide. Uh, six, I think we're on now. Oh, we got an error. Aspen object is not iterable. Aspen collide six line 39. Uh, what did we do? Oh, well, let's take a look. Line 39. Our update collisions thing is all messed up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for now, let's just uh, comment all of this stuff out and pass. I just want to see if this is working. So okay, let's try that again. All right, we got our food, it's shooting around, everything looks good. When we come up here, nothing happens because we just <laughs> commented out our collide function. But okay, so far, so good. So one, two, three, four, five up. Oh. Now, you know what? Some of these are doubled up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six things on this screen. So ah, we probably need to do something about that. Let's come up here and let's go, uh, let's change this back to 100 and let's go I times 100. And this will be slightly off. Okay, so that should change that. Let's run this guy again. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things on the screen, and that looks good. So, all right, now we need to deal with our collisions. So here in our update function, we're calling check collisions. And let's come down here to our check collisions. And this is what we used to have. We had if pygame.sprite.group collide, and then we passed in the aspirin group and the food group, and then also a false and true. Then we wanted to increase the score, right? So we really don't want any of this anymore. Instead, we're going to look at something slightly different, and that is sprite collide any. Right? So before we were doing sprite.group collide, now it's sprite collide any. So let's create a variable and I'm going to call it caught underscore food. Or maybe touched food, whatever. So caught food, hit food, you know, whatever. <laughs> and let's go pie game dot sprite dot sprite collide any. And this is kind of weird. It's all one big long word, sprite collide any. And inside of here, we want to pass in our self dot aspen underscore group and our self dot food underscore group. Now this is where it gets a little tricky with this aspen group. Remember, at the beginning of this video, we changed this 
instead of passing in the whole Aspen group when we started the game, we're just passing in that instance. But up in our game function, we still named it Aspen group. So that's why I'm calling Aspen group right now. So uh, maybe you want to change this to just, just Aspen because we're not usually, we're not really doing the group thing, but ah, we've got all kinds of code going. We'll just leave it as it is. But in order not to access it, we're going to call self.aspen.group. Now you notice before we had a false and a true with the collide thing. We don't need to do that anymore. Uh, we just need this thing. So this caught food will tell us which thing we've hit of any of the things we collided with. That's why it's kind of nice. With the group collide, it doesn't really tell you which one you're hitting. You're just hitting anything in the group, right? With this one, it's telling us the exact thing. So, I mean, if we wanted to, I guess we could print this caught underscore food. It's not really gonna show us anything, uh, but we can at least sort of see it's, it's gonna return a sprite sort of class. So nothing happens, but as I hit different ones, now if we close this, uh, it's saying none, 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 none. But here, this is where we collided with something. Food sprite in one group, right? So uh, that's not all that interesting, except we can now call things from our group, right? And remember our group is in, uh, let's see, our game. Remember our group is in, let's see, uh, if we come down to our food right here, we can access the image, the food type, all of these things, right? So we can call self.type to get the food type. And remember our food types are zero for blue or one for red. This is great. This will allow us to do some logic and determine which one we hit, a red one or a blue one. So that's why we've set this up this way with this new sort of collide method. So, all right, let's come back up here, find our collide method again. And here we could just call type, right? If we wanna print this out and just see real quick, Let's just run this and see for fun. Uh-oh, oh, well, it's giving us some, some grief. All right, so we don't need to print it out. Trust me, we can access it. So let's go if caught underscore food. So if we had a collision, then this is gonna be slapped into this variable. Otherwise, it's just gonna be none, as we saw back here, right? It's just none, 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 until we collide, then it adds something to that variable. So we run some logic to see if there is a caught food. And if so, let's go if, let's say, uh, let's comment this check type of food, you know, red, blue. So if caught, I don't know, I'm not good at spelling caught. <laughs> I'm just gonna copy this. If caught food dot type equals zero, that's our blue, right? So blue. What do we want to happen if we touch a blue? Well, we want the self dot lives to minus equal one. So we want to lose a life. And we also want to uh, move Aspen back under box. So let's go self dot Aspen underscore group dot reset. Now we don't have this reset function. We're gonna to need to create it very quickly here, but we can do that in just a second. Else, if it's not zero, that means it's one, right? So else, let's go caught food dot remove. And we wanna remove self dot food underscore group. So this dot remove is sort of like back here when we're saying false, don't remove it, true, do remove it. Here, instead of doing that, we're being explicit, right? We're saying dot remove it. So take the food, which is a sprite group, remove it from the food group. Because remember, it's a sprite group, it's in the group, so we can remove the sprite from the group. And we also want to self.score plus equals one. So if it's red, we want to increase the score. So here we want to uh, lose a life. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we need this self.aspen reset function. So let's head over to our Aspen group and let's reset Aspen back below the box. So let's define reset as in self. And then what do we wanna do? Well, well let's come up here to our 
self.rect. Remember when we created this Aspen instance, let's see, way down here, we passed in these two coordinates, 200 by 510. And then we took those coordinates and we accounted for them right here. And then we positioned Aspen using those coordinates. So I can just grab this thing and paste it back in there. And that will reset Aspen down below the box. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if we mess that up or I should say how badly we messed that up because, oh, no, it looks pretty good. So now uh, let's sort of uh, wait around here and let's come up here and, uh, oh, X is not defined. Okay, so instead of doing that, let's just come down here. And what did we say? We're passing in 200 by 510. So here in our reset thing, let's just go 200 by 510. Oh, 200. There we go. Let's try this again. And let's come up here and boom, up. Oh, we got hit, so it bopped us back down. Notice we lost a life. We're down to four. Uh, if we come up here. Oh, I got the score. We got the red one, but in the process, I died a bunch of times. So, oh, that's a little sloppy. Let's try that again. All right, so I'm gonna grab the food. All right, ah, we scored, but I somehow lost twice because after it put me at the bottom, I was still pressing up and it hit again very quickly. That happens sometimes. Boom, oh, knock me down two lives. Ah, knock me down again one live. Ah, zero lives. Okay, so now we're gonna need to create a function that you know ends the game after we hit zero lives. We'll do that later. But yeah, so far this is looking pretty good. We have some work to do here. Now that we got the red guy, we want another one of these guys to turn red, right? We'll look at that in the next video, but for now we are moving right along. A lot of changes in this video, so maybe watch this video a couple of times, work out everything we did, and make sure you understand it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Kodomi.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodomi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.